Hey guys, it's Doc, and today we're gonna do aerating. Aerating your lawn. I'm gonna give you a couple tips, answer a couple questions, and then I'm gonna show you my lawn being aerated real quick. So hold on. Hey guys, every single year I aerate myself, but this year I decided to have a crew come out and do it because they're also gonna do a little bit of top dressing and leveling on my lawn, so I figured I ain't renting that thing. Uh, so make sure you click that subscribe button when you click that subscribe button turn on your bell So you know when that other video about the top dressing and leveling is going to be put up So I'm going to go right into aerating. We're going to discuss aerating and some tips for you First of all, why am I not doing it myself? So the small aerators that you rent the little ones on my type soil this heavy clay soil that's real compact It's hard for it to pull plugs. I mean sometimes you can barely get an inch plug pulled out you have to rent one of the big ones if you have a soil like mine. And let me tell you what, that thing will kick your butt. It'll absolutely kick your butt. It weighs, I don't know, what, 250 pounds. It takes two or three people to put it in a truck. I gotta drive almost 30 minutes to pick one of those things up, drive 30 minutes back, aerate my lawn afternoon, spend another hour back and forth travel time. Time is money. So I figured, hey, I'm just gonna hire someone to aerate. A lot easier. Good recommendation for you. And the company that's coming out, they have one of the stand on aerators. I'm gonna show you that in the video. So let's talk real quick about aerating. When should you aerate while you aerate? Soil, you have soil and you have grass. It stays there for years. Eventually it compacts, compacts, compacts. Lawn mowers, traffic, everything else, clay soils. You wanna open it up. It's the same reason why, why farmers till their field every year. Why is that? Open it up, loosen the soil, let oxygen, let moisture, let nutrients get into it, and let the roots grow better. It's the same kind of reason why we aerate the lawn. I mean, we can't go out and till our lawns. I mean, guess we could if you want to <laughs> resod the whole thing, but you can't do it. That's why we aerate. So real quick, some pointers. What time of the year to aerate? You want to aerate when Bermuda grass is growing rapidly. So that's going to be probably late spring, early summer. If you want to do it twice a year, you're going to do it late spring and then uh going into late summer early fall when it cools down you can do it twice a year should i use a spike aerator or core aerator do not use a spike aerator you can actually do a lot of damage and tearing on your lawn you're much better off use a core aerator that goes along and pulls the cores the bigger the better but the bigger will kick your butt um, personally i want to see two to three inch plugs pulled out everywhere on my lawn and the ride-on types that you hire the people for. When you call someone, ask them what kind they have. What model do they have? Make sure they have one of the good size aerators that will really pull it up. Uh, time of day. Time of day really doesn't matter. I prefer to do it early morning while it's still a little bit cool out. But I will tell you about weather patterns. You want to aerate while your soil is moist. You don't want to do it the day after a rain. But 24 hours after. 24 to 48 hours. So look at your 10-day forecast. Wednesday, I have 100% chance of rain coming in. So maybe on Friday, call up and rent an aerator. I like to let my lawn, I want my lawn to be a little bit moist, but I want it to set up. I don't want to be a mud puddle, but I do want it moist. Everything works better on, on aeration if it's a little bit moist. So remember that. Uh, another question I always get is about pre-emergence. Uh, won't it affect my pre-emergent barrier? No, there's plenty of studies out there. Uni uh, University, it was at University of Michigan or Michigan State University did a study on it. And uh, it's such a small percentage of your lawn that gets opened up. It just, they basically said it's it's nil. It's almost no effect on a pre-emergent layer. If you want to Google those that, that study, you can Google it and find out yourself. But no, don't worry about your pre-emergent layer. Uh, a lot of people want to know, well, should I fertilize or do something before or after? It really doesn't matter to me. Now, I will tell you, because I'm having my lawn aerated and I'm having some top dressing go down, I made sure I had everything down before that happened, um, including I put down a little bit of fungus because I'm going to have some areas that are covered. Some of these pockets are huge in my lawn, and I may have an inch and a half of sand on some of this, so I want the stuff down then they're going to put the top dress on but it's a little bit different with aerating aerating really doesn't matter put it on, you can put it on before you can put it on after the main thing you want is is after you aerate you do want to put something maybe put a little 10 10 down and spray super juice after that because you want to get that growth reestablished again so uh, after aeration is a good time to throw down 10 10 10 and spray super juice so anyways let's rock a little bit uh let's uh, go out let's sow some aeration that's about it Hey guys, so prepping up day before, 
I'm going to mark my sprinkler heads and I'm actually going to run my sprinkler system because we haven't had rain in uh, probably four days. So I want to make sure that my soil, the upper layer, just the upper layer is a little bit moist. I'm walking around the yard and all I'm doing is running my sprinkler systems and putting a little orange flag behind the sprinkler. Once the sprinkler is done, I'll move it in front of the sprinkler. They're going to be pulling... Uh, They'll be pulling pretty big three inch plugs out of here. So uh, you don't want these things hit. Oh, Doc has sweat on his brow. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, I'm fat, old and lazy, but uh, it's getting into, today high was 86, which means that uh, we got to start to worry about some fungus issues. So one thing that I like to do now before I aerate or especially the top dressing that I'm getting ready to do, um, I like to put down a fungus control. I have brown patch out front that I'm treating. I'm going to show you two products and you're supposed to, and you really need to rotate these. So one is the Bear Advance fungus control. Now I put this out in a spray and in a granule sometimes. I do both. And then the other one, which I've got two bags of Heritage in the garage which I'm saving for about a month from now. I'll retreat in about a month from now for Heritage because this neighborhood has a ton of diseases. Dollar Spot is horrible in this neighborhood. Now this is why I use this on my front especially because I don't think Heritage covers Dollar Spot. It'll cover everything else, but it's not Dollar Spot's not listed. So uh, I'll put links to both this and the Heritage that I use uh, on the page in the description. But as you can see, just did the whole lawn. Now this, the sun is down, as you can see. The sun is starting to set. This is the perfect time. Temperature drops about 10, 15 degrees. I'm not doing it in the hot sun. I double cross cut the front. I probably should show you that here in a minute. Um, I put all my flags in for my sprinkler heads, so I'm pretty well prepared. Tell me why you have to go and drive me so crazy? Now I'm feeling lost without you and I just can't be Without you, baby, won't you all night long Won't you all night long Tell me Why'd you have to go and drive me so crazy Now I'm feeling lost without you and I just can't be Without you, baby, won't you all night long Won't you all night long Won't you watch all night, watch all night Watch, 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 watch,
one thing I wanted to show you about, I want to talk about aerating and why I always get the bigger machine is because you just don't have the issues with areas with non-plugs. I mean, look at the size of these plugs here. I mean, all these plugs are good sized plugs. I mean, it's just a plug field out here. And he's just zipping right along. So the right machine for aerating, I think, is key. If you get the little small aerators, it's really kind of tough. These big ride-on aerators are the way to go. Uh, the one I used last year that I showed you, man, that'll beat you up. That is a hard day of work. My butt is worn out. <laughs> it wasn't just aerating. We did a top dressing and then I manually raked a lot of stuff in. I'm worn out. The final question that everyone's gonna ask is, they're gonna ask about, do I leave the plugs on the ground and do I fertilize? So, do I leave the plugs on the ground? There's very little nutritional value to leaving the plugs on, but yes, you can leave them on, let them dry for 24 hours, then set your mower on low, and then just cut them up real quick. Um, there really is no way to kind of pick them up. If I could pick them up, I would. And the reason being is, if you ever set a brick on Bermuda grass, what happens? You get a yellow spot. The same thing, when you leave a plug on Bermuda grass, you're covering up the Bermuda grass from the sun and that little spot will actually turn yellow. If you want to have return nutrients to your ground, add some fertilizer. I mean, get these plugs up. The other thing is, is they squish down flat and let me show you. Now we've done a top dressing here, so it's a little, but every time you ride a mower over it, see, now these are plugs and they've flattened out and they'll cover up these plugs will cover up growing grass and they're gonna create yellow little spots underneath it. So uh, I like to get them crushed up as soon as possible. If I had a way to pick them up, I'd have a way to pick them up. I think last year what I did was I just bagged and cut real close just to get them, get them dispersed, not necessarily pick them up. Lastly, fertilizing. Yeah, it's recommended that what you do is uh, you put down a little bit of fertilizer after you aerate. You can put down a little PGF fertilizer. I'll put a link in the description down below, the granular we have out this year. If you want to put down a little 10, 10, 10, you can put down a little 10, 10, 10, and then spray with super juice. Um, I'm gonna do a real heavy super juice spray probably in about three or four days. I'm gonna let this settle in because of the top dressing I've done. I'm gonna cut it again real short. I'm gonna do a little bit more raking. I'm going to put, uh, and then I'm going to come out and spray real heavy with super juice on this just to sort of give it a kick and give it a punch. Um, that's about it, guys. Remember, click that subscribe button and turn on your bell so that when um, the next video on the top dressing, it's pretty cool to actually watch it. Uh, it's a lot of work, man, but it's pretty cool. Uh, that's it. I'm going to go inside and rehydrate. <laughs> Talk to you later. Die.